So I had a client in my office today who came down. We spent a couple hours together, and you know he does tax planning. And you know right now is such an interesting time. And I think sometimes we forget about, um, you know, really how to position some of these tax planning engagements this time of year as we are in February getting into the tax season. So he was having trouble. He looked at January, and this guy normally closes you know, 25, 35% of people that he talks to, you know, four potential clients doing tax planning, but he had a you know, bit of a rough month and slid below that in the month of January. And some of you guys might say, well, I close 90%. Well, you don't want to be closing 90%. You close 90%, you know, your, your pricing is definitely too low. I mean, you really want to close in that 25 to 35% range if you're going to get a good deal. And he normally does that, but we were kind of going over what was going on in his particular process. And so when you talk with a potential client for tax planning, the most important thing you need to do when you go into that call is you need to go into that call knowing, okay, what specifically, like go through all the questions on deductions, legal entity structure, retirement, insurance, loopholes, tax cuts, and Jobs Act updates. And you need to ask them, okay, you know, what are all these, what are they doing in the previous year, 2018? We might even go back and ask questions about 2017. But it's super important that you get a handle on where they were at for 2018. Now, Right now it's February. Very few tax planning strategies are we going to be able to implement for the 2018 year. But we need to know, based on working with their other accountant, how much do we estimate? This is key. How much do we estimate that they overpaid in taxes in the year of 2018 by not working with us? Have to have that number. His problem was he was focusing on, well, hey, if you work with me in 2019, I could save you this much on taxes. People are not going to be motivated by that, guys. Nowhere near as strong as telling them specifically what they overpaid last year. It feels real. And in fact, you want to make it visceral. So you want to ask them, so, I mean, do you typically do estimated quarterly payments? Did you make your estimated payment on January 15th? How much was it? You want to go through and figure this out. So you want to figure out what are they making on their estimated payments? Let's say, for example, they made you know $30,000 in estimated payments in total, uh, $7,500 each, each time, and in January it was $7,500. If they would have worked with you January 1st, 2018 on a tax plan, how much lower would their their tax planning or their ta their tax estimates be? And that seventy five hundred dollar payment in January, what would it have been? Let's say you could save them twelve thousand dollars. Okay, so twelve thousand dollars. So that means each of those periods it would have been three thousand dollars less. Instead of paying seventy five hundred, they would have paid only three thousand. And if you can get them to see that, and then you can get them to see that, not only that, each of the payments should have been less. So, but let's say they weren't. And you, you met up with them you know, towards the end of the year, did a tax plan, saved them $1,200. You would get them $3,000 back on January – sorry, uh, $3,000 less of a payment on January 15th. And when they file their return, they get $9,000 back. You need to get the client to see this. Like You need to say things like, look, I mean honestly, if we would have worked together last year, each of those $7,500 payments would have been $4,500. Or let's say they didn't make any estimated payments and they're planning on paying 30000 when they file their return and the penalties associated with that. You want to say something like, I know you're about to pay the $30,000. Um, what did you pay last year in 2018 for the 2017 year? About the same 30000 Yeah, I mean, honestly, if we would have worked together on this last year, you only would have paid, I estimate, 18000 So you would have saved 12000 Could be more than that if we look at your return, but based on our conversation today, I'd say... I estimate I could save you $12,000 or more. They need to know, guys. When you're doing tax planning, nobody wants to buy a tax plan. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to buy, oh, I want to buy a tax plan. Oh, no, no, no. Nobody wants to buy a tax plan. They want to know specifically how much money am I going to make on the deal. But the key here is, and the reason why I don't shoot this video, it's not about 2019. Yes, it's important. And the next thing you do need to say, and I walk through this very clearly, Look, if obviously 2018 is done, I'd love, you know, if I prepare the return, I'll do the best I can. But there's some things we can't change. For 2019, uh, based on the projections that you told me and what you're planning to do this year, I estimate I could save you, based on this call today, I haven't looked at your return yet, but based on all the questions we've gone through today, I estimate I could save you $17,350 for the 2019 year. And those estimated payments starting in April are going to be lower, you know, coming up soon, um, if we do decide to do this today. So they can see that by not working with you last year, they overpaid. Guys, that's so motiv motivating for them because fear of missing out and fear of loss is more powerful than a excitement about gain. Okay, So fear of loss in the previous year, even though you can't change it, is more of a motivating factor to get the deal 
than focusing on the gains in 2019. Then you do mention the gains in 2019. And my friends, that is why people switch their accountants. They switch because somebody else comes to them and says, hey, you know, I know you're working with your existing accountant or your existing CPA, but how many years have you been working with them? And how many years have you been making that much money? Mm. Look, I'm, I'm sure they're a great person. I mean, I'm not saying that they're negligent or incompetent. Um, but over the last eight years, I estimate you overpaid in taxes by about $11,750 a year, which is about, you know, it's, it's up there over the last eight years. That's about $88,000 over the last eight years that you overpaid in taxes. I mean, honestly, I wish I, wish I would have found you sooner. Um, so people say, well, Andrew, why would they switch to me? Why would they work with me? They've got an existing accountant. It's like, yeah, but if you get on the call and you can show them that they've been overpaying in previous years based on detailed questions. By the way, you have to actually calculate these numbers. You can't just throw numbers out. If you say 10,000, 20,000, they're going to think it's fake. And it is fake if you don't know what you're doing. You have to know how to ask questions in detail, go through deductions, legal entity structure, retirement, insurance, loopholes, tax cuts and jobs act updates, advanced strategies, niche specific strategies, and figure out how much could you have saved them if you worked with them last year. Give them that number. And even if they're working with an existing accountant, boom, you'll have them right there in a second. But if you think you're going to get them based on a gain in the future, if you think you're going to get them just by shooting out a number, you won't. Right now, every single person that you talk to over the next couple of months, you need to be thinking 2019 planning fee and 2018 tax preparation at the same time, upfront in full. Okay. For those of you guys that are charging for tax preparation when you file the return, not good. You're working. I mean, it'd be like, it's crazy. You know, you're, you're doing all that work up front. You're coordinating files, sometimes having meetings, you know, doing work before you get paid. It's a joke. You shouldn't be doing that. And honestly, the best time to do tax planning is at the beginning of the year. So you can actually get some of these things implemented and changed for the entire year. So they should be doing it now in Q1 and Q2. So, you know, you owe it to the client to be going through and breaking these out into separate engagements so you can actually take the time to help get them set up in the most optimal way. Because I know if you're not doing this, then especially in a year like last year where we had the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, some of these people overpaid in taxes last year because you didn't charge them more. You didn't charge them enough to hang out with them and actually go through the process of helping them pay the least amount that they, they can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to get this posted.